Our next speaker, David Militzer, is an educational program specialist, 21st century learning, and middle grades career and college transitions division at the California Department of Education. David will speak on the importance of work-based learning and initiatives within the California Department of Education. Please let us give a warm welcome to David Militzer. So I work at the department um, in the career and college transitions division. Now, some of us in the department thought it was important to point out when we formed that, uh, when, we, when career readiness became a priority, supposedly, in national education policy, that um, we'd be kind of realistic and say, well, you know, not everybody goes to college, but everybody has to deal with careers, so let's say career and college transitions. Now that's kind of in the face of practice today um, in the nation. Um, and it's kind of ironic um, because you know, when college readiness was established as a national priority seven, six, seven, eight years ago, connected with the discussions around common standards and the development of the Common Core, it, you know, um, career readiness wasn't on the table. But then somebody somewhere said, wait a minute, you know, we're leaving something out here. We ought to add career readiness, and they did. But they didn't really say, well, what does that mean? You know, what, what's the implications of that? So consequently, uh, in the preceding years, there's a certain level of confusion um, in the field. That doesn't mean that there aren't great things happening in career readiness right now in terms of practice. I mean, it's wonderful things at every level. At county levels, at program levels, uh, at schools and district levels. And, I, and I'm in contact with many of them in California and some outside of California, and it's, it's breathtaking. Now the other shoe that's going to drop is we're going to look at how we're doing generally in terms of career readiness. Um, and we're, then we're going to relate to the great work that's been going on in the fields of youth development, in the fields of social emotional learning, in the work Laura and her colleagues have been doing around what are the real skills that people need in the 21st century. Let's break it down. Let's go be, you know, uh, I'm, I work on um, promoting 21st century skills from the department's perspective. The four C's, any, have anybody heard of those? <laughs> Can anybody recite them? <laughs> Can I recite them? <laughs> Go ahead. Pardon? Collaboration, critical, critical thinking, thinking creativity, creativity, communication. communication. Right. So um, one of my wishes is that the Department of Education would adopt the four C's as its modus operandi. Anybody, people who work at the department, do you think that'd be a good idea? <laughs> right. Well, you know, it will if I succeed, but <laughs> and if Michael and, all, and people who are sympathetic, but I wouldn't put your money on it today, um, maybe tomorrow. Um, okay, so let's, let's, let's get started and dig into this a little bit. Um, there's, as I mentioned, there seems to be some confusion about what we're really doing with career readiness in the general field of education. That doesn't mean we're all confused. Um, but increasingly, there are voices that are saying that we're really incoherent and we, we, re we really are all over the map in terms of people having different interpretations of what it is, different um, understandings of its implication for our, our schools um, from, well, you know, people say you make more money going to college. We have college readiness already in place, so career readiness is really taken care of because we're doing college readiness. Well, you know, sell that on the streets of your communities to your parents and kids and families where that's not working, right? I mean, it's almost like we're in a re reality denial position in terms of the college writing and stuff. Um, Sir Ken Ro I was watching a YouTube video because Sam said, you might want to watch a YouTube video or a, or a um, you know, um, a TED Talk video to get yourself, you know, acclimated. So I watched uh, Ken Robinson and one of his, you know, his, if, you've, if you've heard Ken Robinson speak, you know what I'm talking about. If you haven't, you should check him out, okay, um, on TED Talks or YouTube. And one of the things he realized, he says he went to a school once, he saw a banner that said, 
college starts in the first grade. And you know, if, if you know Ken Robinson, he's got a very dry sense of humor, so he goes, no, it doesn't. <laughs> first grade starts in the first grade. So even if we adopt a mindset like we should be doing college ready, college ready, college ready, or if we said career ready starts in the first grade, we'd be closer, or careers start in the first grade, would be a little bit further away. Because we, it's like the, the, it's the devil is in the details, okay? And college readiness for all is a great thing to do in terms of opportunity and making sure that kids can move into their potential in terms of education, but it's not a cure-all. So let's, say, let's see what sur students are saying. And uh, recent surveys have come out on students' feelings about whether their, career, their education has, has prepared them for careers in both college-level students or, or uh, college-level students and, and uh, secondary-level schools are saying that, no, they're not. You know, K-12 K is, is not preparing us for careers, and college is not preparing us for careers. Educators, when surveyed, at all levels are saying that they are not prepared to implement career readiness supports and programs in their schools for their kids. So what's going on, right? I mean, here we, we're sailing along, college and career ready. Um, so we're going to, so, okay, so what's going on is that we're w working primarily on career readiness at the high school level, and we're not even thinking it through in terms of elementary and kindergarten as a, or, or excuse me, middle schools as a system, um, although there are exceptions. There are exceptions. Um, I work, I, I represent the middle grades at the Department of Education, and if, and if you've heard, if you ever hear my workshops, it's always about getting below high school and starting to recognize that kids are developing competencies and skills and mindsets before they get to high school and measuring our effectiveness at career readiness based on the enrollment in multiple pathway programs in 11th grade is not telling us much, okay? It's not telling us much. We, we've we've uh, lowered the dropout rate nationally to around, to around 19%. We have record college dropout rates. Now what's What's with that? What's, what's the matter with that picture? Okay? So we're working, and we're, and we're applauding ourselves, saying we're doing great. We're getting more kids to graduate. We're getting more kids to go to college. And we're getting more kids with crippling debt and dropping out. Um, so the, another thing that, that, we're, that um, I, I like to, to talk about is what are we what are, what's happening with student outcomes, okay? If we have 100 students, and, and the Department of Education, the National, uh, uh, Federal Department of Education did this kind of analysis a few years ago, so I just kind of kept it up based on current research. If we have 100 kids who are starting the ninth grade, now we have, we have 19 or 20 who drop out. Um, we have, so rounded off, we say we have like 80 who graduate and go on. Um, 27 of those 80 will go straight to work or not continue their education in some way. 53 then will go to college. So that sounds like it's a pretty good figure. Well, 29 of those uh, 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 college goers will, will drop out. And um, actually, la a larger percentage of them will probably need remediation and have to go into non-credit courses in order to continue, and that will lower the percentage that they'll achieve a degree drops if that happens. So then we, uh, 12, uh, 24 uh, of, of the original 100 will graduate. Um, now it'll be a split that 12 of the 24 will go on and get jobs in their fields of study. 12 will be underemployed or unemployed. So we got 12% you know, based on this kind of broad brush. There's exceptions, obviously. Keep, kids can drop out of college and be very successful in careers. So this is just broad brush, but based on these numbers, we're doing, we're, we've got about 12%, or we're batting 120, let's put it that way, in terms of our career-ready success. Um, so what are, what are employers saying about career readiness of our youth? Well, they're saying that, well, let, look, first of all, before, uh, Laura mentioned this, I think, earlier. Um, and um, let's compare what they're saying now, which is they need employability skills. We need 
kids coming to us with, with no basic soft skills, employability skills, the non-cognitive skills that you know, researchers talk about. You know, but 30 years ago, there was a different tune. Employers were saying, we need people who can communicate and do math. We need people who can speak English and write and do math. And our education system is still based on that feedback. It's not based on employers are saying we need kids with employability skills. We're still trying to measure career readiness through academic indicators that are measuring academic achievement. And we're adding on to it, potentially, and we're debating this right now, um, whether, you know, how many kids are going to uh, multiple pathways or linked learning track. Okay, this is not changing practice in middle grades. It's not changing practice in youth programs. It's not giving you anything you can sting your teeth on and saying, this is where we need to concentrate more, right? And we need assessments that change practice, that, that reinforce effective practices and exemplary practices, not assessments that are a report card to some you know, bureaucrat or politician about whether a school is doing a good job or not, right? We need to look at students, not institutions. Okay, so they told me I had a little extra time, so I'm getting a little relaxed here. I don't want to, <laughs> uh, but I don't want to, you know, misuse that. Um, so, so it's interesting, though, that employers are saying we need employability skills, non-cognitive skills. And we have researchers that are coming out and saying, well, we've got, you know, great academics models. We've got uh, common core standards. We have assessments. We're putting huge amounts of resources into the academic side of the house. And we're acting like career readiness is a new initiative, a new extra add-on that we have to do. Now, I'm a, I can be a little cynical about this, um, so please excuse me uh, for that. But it seems, you know, it's, until this is a system, we say, let's see what we could do if we really thought about career readiness, like we used to think about career readiness back in the good old days, in the 1900s, you know, where, where career readiness was not an issue. It was obvious. It was in the genetics of schools to help kids prepare for their, their future lives and work and marriage are probably, or, you know, whoever you pair up with are probably your two biggest decisions. It's, you know, so it's not an extra program. Um, so, I forgot my uh, slides here. So I want to, um, you know, I'm not making all this up. So, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm a novice. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so I wanted to, this, this is a quote from a report that just came out from the National State School Board's of Education Study Group, which sounds like a pretty high flutin group, the National Association of School Boards, State School Boards. The lack of readiness for college careers and civic life cannot sit on the back burner any longer. A decades-old strategy that has focused almost exclusively on college preparation is not working for students, teachers, families, or communities. When this stuff starts to come out from big national groups that are trying to keep everybody happy, I pay attention. You know, because that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a sign, right? And I think it is the best of times, worst of times. So the best of times is we got great practice, we got great scientific research knowledge, we know what works for kids, we can do a developmental model of education, and have been in some places. But we can get back to that and support it systemically and systematically in the state, in our counties, in our districts, in our schools. We can use the LCAP to try to influence what happens locally in a way that we've never had before in California. So we have all these positives that we have on the table, um, yet in general, we're like, you know, my, you know it, we're having discussions about you know, indicators of career readiness when we really need to be talking about other questions. So I took a whack at it um, in terms of like, all right, questions really frame what you're going to come up with, right? They establish your universe. If you start with career readiness and say, how are we going to measure it, you're going to go towards assessment. And you're going to go to assessment professionals and experts to say, what do you think? 
How do we measure this? And they'll come up with stuff because they're experts in assessment. Without a focus on what do we mean by career readiness? What, you know, what do we mean by career readiness in schools and education? Without having that initial discussion, you know, then we can be all over the place. And in fact, the state board just delayed acting on career readiness indicators and other indicators, the new API in California, by a year. They pushed it back by a year because the discussion never got past the indicators. And they said, well, we're not, we're not sure this is right. We can't move this fast. Um, so, so then what are the outcomes? What do we know about how, how we're doing right now? What is the reality in terms of students? What is the gap between what, we, what career readiness is and what we want the outcomes to be and what the outcomes really are? What's missing? And what, we can, what can we do to bridge the gap? So, definition of career readiness. And you know, the employability definition, I mean, the, it fits, it, I mean, we have frameworks and we have elements. And then we have, this is an overarching theme around career readiness that is starting to emerge. Um, ACT basically uh, uh, has come out with a report, working paper I think in February of this year, that includes these four elements, a little different language. But the difference here is that many educators are thinking that it just really that, let me see if this works here. So, well, that's it. Um, the academic skills and maybe technical skills are what we have to, and, and achievement levels in those areas are, are what we have to assess to determine if people are career ready. Now, it's not working, okay? Uh, it, to the degree we're doing it, it's not working because it's just more of the same assessments, right? It's not really changing practice. Um, we don't change practice until we get into employability skills and until we get career planning skills that include career management, lifelong learning, negotiating transitions. So it's much more than planning. It's really agency. It's really uh, being able to operate effectively and efficacy in your life. So, these four, I mean, we got the academic stuff covered. We got the Common Core and the SBAC. We, I mean, we're, we're doing it, right? It's, it's, we don't have to put a lot more effort into career readiness around academic skills. But, and employers are saying what we need is employability skills, right? So they're actually saying, look further in terms of what you're doing. So um, in terms of frameworks, I, you know, I, I did this kind of like brain dump you know, uh, about a year ago, and I said, okay, what's the non-cognitive discussions that are going on? What are all the elements? What are all the words? What are all the books? What are all the ideas that are coming out? You know, there's grit, there's growth mindset, there's applied learning, there's student agency, there's competence, there's the four C's, there's climate, there's medic, okay, so I just threw them all, I tried to start mapping them out and see, you know, where do they resemble each other, what similarities they have, what kind of overlap. So. So I took a very bold step from there, you know, and, um, but you know, I work in the bureaucracy. I have to find interesting things to do. <laughs> and, and I don't work in the curriculum. I mean, I'd be very busy all the time if I worked in curriculum and assessment and that kind of, and finance, I mean, you know. <laughs> but I work in 21st century skills and I work in middle grades. You know, those are my two areas and nobody knows what's going on in those areas. So. <laughs> Okay, so what I said was, well, maybe we should try to look at some frameworks that are coming out, and at, just at this time, the Chicago framework came out, um, and, and look at some other frameworks, including what's missing from our career readiness discussion in education, which is the whole career development field, which is very rich, very informative, and doesn't get discussed at the state board level, you know, when they're making decisions about indicators. So, um, so well, we know a lot more than we're applying. Okay, so I decided that I would try to like just chart out, you know, the elements of the these various frameworks, and then and then kind of compare them. And I, since you can see, you, I have, I thought I didn't. This is the largest slide uh, um, projection that I've ever seen. So this is great. <laughs> Most people can't see that in my. <laughs> So, but if you'll see this, so I started over here, and I, this, is, this is the deep learning, uh, non-cognitive and cognitive domains, 
that I, that I kind of, after I fooled around with it a bit, I decided I'd put these on the left, left uh, um, column. And so they include interpersonal, and that's the social, emotional, right? Intrapersonal, social, emotional, um, and the cognitive domains. Those three domains that have to be all involved in deep learning. And then, I, and then, and, and then we look at career development um, uh, uh, frameworks. And we look at youth development frameworks, and I use the report. We look at social emotional um, research. And I'm not saying this is the best, or any, but this is what I, I, I came up with. Um, and then there's school counseling frameworks. And you can see that personal social competencies, managing emotions, emotional competence, self-regulation, all these things are consistent, right? Career and life skills, growth mindset, uh, critical thinking and creativity, self-regulation, plan and make successful transitions. There's a great degree of commonality and similarity, okay? So my theory is that this will help us understand that we, there is available knowledge from sources that we don't necessarily always think of. It don't, doesn't always come to mind when we think about career readiness. We don't, we don't think about social emotional learning. We should be. If we have a social emotional learning initiative in our district, that should be connected to how can we do career readiness that includes that and promotes it, right? So we get some synthesis and synergy. Um, so these are just bigger versions of that. So you actually saw, we have synergy again here. We saw this slide earlier, right? Um, and it's how do we look at the expand career readiness across the K-12 uh, continuum and develop specific appropriate activities that are not, they're not putting a banner on your uh, school saying, you know, college starts in first grade. That's not, a, uh, that's not a college readiness strategy. It's certainly not a career readiness strategy. Um, and it works against student agency. It works against the youth development principles of helping kids make their own decisions and own their own life, right? Okay, so, so we, do have, we do have some standards that would help this, though. We have CTE standards that include um, standards for career-ready practices that address some of these non-cognitive areas, um, including that every kid should have an education and career plan by the time I think, it doesn't say this in the standards, but I think it's by the time you're in ninth grade, because you're, you're making decisions in high school that will have either open doors or close them about careers and educational pathways. And you need information about yourself, you need reflection about yourself, you need an ex exposure to careers and career uh, exploration. So, boiling it down, okay, I tried to say, okay, how, how, can this, how can I make sense in myself? How do I understand this? If we had project-based learning starting in the, in the elementary years, and there's models out there, there are people who are doing it. There's wonderful schools. There's some K-8 K open schools that are still doing it from 1970s in California. But there's other models as well. You know, Common Core pushes us in this, can push us in this direction if we, if we choose to go there. Evolving into work-based learning opportunities in secondary schools, in middle level and high schools, they can be at the school, they can be off campus. You know, they can be simulated, they can be employer-based, that are all anchored by a student-centered approach to learning that, that encourages student voice and choice. And really, it's not, not more than owning your own learning. It's not, owning it seems like you went out and bought it, and brought it home and you own it. It's, it's, it's um, having, being purpose-driven in your life. Right? That's a key character. I mean, if you look at the grit stuff, that's a key characteristic. You have long-term goals that you're going to persist in achieving. If kids have life goals when they go to college, that help them choose their major, that help them choose the college, and it helps them choose what they do, like mentoring or different, different kinds of op opportun work opportunities while they're in college, it will enhance their opportunities of being career successful. So it's not college or not college. It's really being ready to make those decisions and having the support to do so. So um, the, some, of, some of the wor uh, material that I use, including the Youth Development Report, uh, are available uh, at this Orange County Professional Learning Series site that I've partnered with in some of my workshops. And, um, so, and, and that's a really good site. Um, if you're looking for resources, 
on, on these issues uh, because it's, it's all around career readiness. And we don't see too many of those that specifically um, focus on career readiness without saying, oh, we're, it's kind of like car, career, uh, college readiness. So um, that's my contact information. I welcome um, follow-up contacts. And if I can help uh, provide other information or background in any other way, I'd be glad to do that. I'll be around for the conference.